Hi everyone, we welcome you all to this week Tech Tuesday webinar on read emails and attachment from Office 365 using IDMC cloud application integration. Today's speaker is Rahul Minda, who is a senior consultant from IPS team. Before we start the session, let's go through some of the housekeeping tips. The webinar is for one hour that includes 15 minutes Q&A. You can post your queries in Q&A box, which will be answered at the end of the presentation. All participants will be muted during the presentation. The session will be recorded and it will be available on our Infra Support YouTube channel and Success Portal, where you'll be able to download the slide deck. Please feel free to submit your suggestion or feedback for this session in the post webinar survey. The Success Portal is a micro-learning platform that offers free, unlimited learning to all the registered users. This feature-rich platform helps you learn and adopt to Informatica products better. The following are a few important links that you can go over later. This will help you in your product adoption journey with Informatica. Over to you, Rahul. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So we'll be starting off with the agenda for today. First off, we'll be talking about the Microsoft Graph API overview. It will be followed up with Microsoft Graph API integration practice with IDMC. Once we are through with it, we'll be talking about the prerequisites, which will be divided into two sections. First, we'll be talking about the Azure portal setup using an Office 365 sandbox environment. And the next step, we'll be talking about the token generation process. Once we are through with that, we'll be talking about the connection setup within CEI, followed up by defining the input parameters for custom API. It will be then followed up with a demo and, with a, and we'll be wrapping up with a Q&A. So the very first question would be, what is Microsoft Graph API? Microsoft Graph API actually offers a single endpoint to all the Microsoft Cloud services. One can use REST APIs or SDKs to access these endpoints and build applications on top of it. Some of the major services that are accessible by Graph API are Teams, Groups, Outlook, Calendar, and there are much more. Next up, we'll be talking about the Microsoft Graph API integration with IDMC. Cloud application integration, which is a part of IDMC as a microservice, offers a single trusted solution, and it can support any integration pattern endpoint so as to automate any business process and perform any real-time analytics. The application developed on CEI handles all the complexity needs in the backend, and it presents the user with some basic input and or as options. It traverses multiple Microsoft Graph APIs, and it processes the email to fetch the attachments and copy it over to the secure agent server location. Next, we'll be talking about the prerequisites. First of all, we'll be talking about the Azure portal setup using an Office 365 sandbox environment. Microsoft Graph API requires certain permission and it can be given through it through Azure portal. We would need to follow some steps to ensure safety and adherence to security. The below articles covers all the aspects of it in detail. Although this is usually taken up by the admin team in the project, but I have listed down the mandatory steps that are required as prerequisites. First off is the registration to the Azure portal. This helps connect the Azure portal to the Microsoft Cloud service out, like Outlook in our case. Next is the setting of API permission. Once registered, one needs to define permissions so as to ensure only certain required permissions are given to the application to avoid unwanted access. These permissions are mandatory to the following APIs listed on the screen. One can even give write permission if they have a use case to send emails or they wish to extend this application forward based on this particular requirement. Next, we'll be talking about the token generation process. And as part of it, we would need to look up two IDs to connect to the right application with the correct user, and then also generate a passcode, which we would refer to as client secret key. First off is client ID. It is nothing but an application ID that the registration portal has assigned the app. It can be checked in the following link. Next up will be tenant ID. It can be located by searching for tenant properties in Azure and then scrolling down to locate tenant ID. All both of it can be referred to in the screenshot attached. After we have obtained the client ID and the tenant ID, next up is client secret key. Client secret key can be created under certificates and secret tab in Azure directory. The value field defined is the actual key and it and we require it to generate the token. Except for the client secret key, all other are static values. Client secret should be newly created every few months as a rotation policy is required to ensure the best practices and to ensure security adherence. Next up, we'll be talking about the connection setup within CEI. Once we have imported the utility over to the Informatica Cloud Application Integration Console, 
then we need to update the connections for that. To update the connection, we would require the previously generated IDs of client ID, tenant ID, and client secret key. And then we would need to update it on the connection and then repoint the security agent server as required. Once we are done through that, we need to publish the connection. Next, we'll be updating the file connection. Two files are generated as part of this process, one being the data file, another being the delta key file. One is to repoint the secure agent and update the target directory for the file generation under event target tab. Let's talk about the significance of these two files. Delta key file stores the delta key which is used for delta detection on emails and only the latest email is always processed. This ensures processing of only latest files during every run. The data file from email attachment is recreated on the secure region server if in case the previous file was not present. But if the previous file is present, then it is appended to the existing file which is already present on the secure region server. This solution is used to hand handle multiple attachment files within one single email. Next up, we'll be talking about the input parameters for the custom API. As part of the application, we have tried to give the user as much control as possible. The input parameters of the application are a reflection for that. Let us go over the various parameters. First off is the user ID. It should be the email or the user ID of the receiver. Next comes up is the search folder. This is a search string to locate the email in a particular folder. Examples could be inbox, deleted items, archives, etc. Next up is the search email subject. This is the email subject based on which the search string would find the particular email. Next up is the search email ID. We need to pass the sender email ID, which could contain the data, data file. Followed by that, we have output file name and delta file name. These two parameters give the user to generate the two files with a specific name of their own choice. Lastly, we have delta file path, which should be the similar path which we have defined in the file connection. Let us now start with the demo of the utility. As part of the demo, we'll be trying to send over three files from the email, and we'll be trying to replicate the three files on the secure agent server. First, let me walk you through the three files. The first file has some keys like one to six with alongside some junk data. The next file, as the values from 7 to 12, alongside another set of junk data, which we have kept just for testing purpose. Lastly, we would have records from 13 to 18, with another set of junk data, which we'll be using, which will be sending it over to the, uh, to the respective email. Let me walk you through the contents of the email, which we're about to send. In the two, we have the email ID of the sandbox environment. In the subject, we have API testing, which would act as a search string. Then we have the two files attached, which has six records each, like the first six in the API test file and the next six in the API test one.csv file. Then we have a body where we can put in any text. It's a free text a placeholder. Once we, once we have all these things ready, we'll press on send. Once we have received the email, it would look something like this where the attachment are the two files and the subject line is API testing. Let us navigate to the cloud application integration console. We'll be running this process. As you can see, we have defined the user ID as by sandbox environment ID. The search folder is inbox where we have received the email. The search email subject is API testing through which we are sending out the emails. The search email ID is, is my Informatica email ID through which I sent out the email to the sandbox environment. The remaining three uh, values are output file name, delta file path, and delta file name, which have defined some uh, key, defined some specific values. On my security and server, this is a location which we have used to define the data file path and the delta key file path. As you can see, currently it's empty because we're trying to simulate the very first run. Once we have run the process, we'll find the delta key file generated here alongside the data file. Now let's navigate back to cloud application integration and run the process. Once we have triggered the process, we'll get the start execution. We'll wait a couple of seconds. Yeah, so with this, the execution is completed. Now we'll navigate back to the folder.
In the folder, we can see the two files are generated, one being the delta key file and one being the data file. Let's now check out both these files. The delta key file would look something like this. Basically, it contains the delta key for the next iteration. Coming to the data file, as you can see, we have the six records from the very first file and the next six records from the next file, all appended together into one single file. And as we keep on triggering and sending the files, it keeps on appending at the bottom half of the file until we consume this file and replace it or remove it altogether. Now let us send the fresh email again and test the incremental aspect of the process. We are sending the same email with a different subject line. Basically, the search string is same as API testing, but we have added the FW like a forward option to it. And as we have previously mentioned, the forward doesn't matter because the API testing is the actual search string based on which the email is searched. Other than that, the file contains the values from 13 to 18, which we earlier shared. Now let us send it across. Once we have received the file in our inbox, then we'll navigate to the cloud application integration and run the process again. We'll wait a couple of seconds for it to trigger. Yeah, once it has triggered, we'll navigate to the folder again. Yeah, coming to the folder, we'll do a refresh and we'll again check the delta file and the data file. Data file is updated with a new search string, which will be used for the next iteration of job run. Now let's navigate to the data file. Yeah, coming to the data file, as you can see, since we didn't consume this file as such, so the new record got automatically appended to it. Previously, we had record till 12. Now the new file has added from 13 to 18 onwards. This is it with the demo. The utility can be scheduled to trigger every few minutes in the application integration control. So as to keep on reading the emails in real time and producing a data file on the secure agent server. We have tested the application with 19 MB of files and it processes it under a minute. It doesn't process more than 20 MB due to the limitation on the graph API itself. Important thing to note here is the capability of the cloud application integration as a whole. The utility we developed on CEI can be replicated and used for any similar requirement, and it can be further modified to suit a similar requirement. With CEI, one can use the platform to build any such solution and integrate different systems in real time. That's it with the demo, and we'll be moving on to the question and answers. Hi all, we have reached the Q&A part. Please post your questions. Are waiting questions. In the meantime, uh, like uh, we could, there were some basic questions which, uh, which were asked earlier. So uh, one of them could be like, uh, is the graph API like the graph API? Can I find a different type of scenario? And uh, yes, it can. Like for example, if we need to send out email to someone, okay, and we want to integrate it on CI platform, then we can do it with CI as an integration platform. And uh, uh, we can call different uh, other uh, aspects of the graph API, um, uh, like to CEI itself.
Any more questions? Right. Uh, thank you for this amazing session, Rahul. Uh, we would like to inform that all Tech Tuesday webinar will be available on Success Portal under the Resources tab. Today's webinar will be available tomorrow, where you can view the recording and also download the slide deck. Please fill in the survey as your feedback is important to us. With that, we will end today's webinar. Thank you all for attending.